Keeping track of your finances can often be difficult. Most trackers are either expensive, very manual, or not very customizable. That's why in this video, we're going to make a simple automated budget tracker in Excel for free in just 15 minutes. By the end of the video, you'll have a dashboard tab breaking down your income, your expenses, and your savings, not just by month, but also by category. You'll also have an entries tab to add all of your transactions, which will automatically feed into the dashboard. So let's get into it. The first part is the entries tab, which is where we would add any of the transactions. And you can download this exact same Excel file to follow along. Basically, you can see here we have all of the different headers. So let's go ahead and fill in a sample transaction. Let's suppose it's the 1st of 2024. And for the month here, we want it in text format because we'll need that for the dashboard. So we'll go equals, type text there as the formula, hit the tab key, the value is the date that we want to reference, comma, and the format, we want it in monthly format. So in quotations, we're just going to put the M four times there, close a parenthesis and hit enter. That's basically saying to spell out the full month. For the amount, let's suppose this is 50 bucks and the category, you'll notice here on the side that we have this category table. So it needs to be one of these categories. This is a fairly comprehensive list so it should cover most transactions. So for the category there, we can go over and create a drop-down list by going to data, then going to this button right here, which is the data validation. We're gonna want to make a list and that list source is going to be all of these categories down over here. Then we just wanna hit on okay there. And you'll notice that we have that drop-down for us Let's suppose that this fix 50 is for transport and then it should automatically detect whether it's an income or an expense based on this table over here to the side. So to do that, we can use the XLOOKUP formula equals XLOOKUP, hit the tab key. And don't worry if these steps look a bit overwhelming, we just need to set them up once and then they'll be ready for all future transactions. So for the XLOOKUP here, the lookup value is a transport and we want to find that transport within all of these categories. As you can see, you'll find it in here, comma, and what do we want it to return? Well, whether it's an income or an expense. So we can highlight this column right next to it, close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see it's an expense, which is making sense there. For description, this is fully optional in case you need to remind yourself. I'm just going to put an NA there. Now to make this table dynamic, we just want to hit on control T that's going to convert it into a table for us. Now that we've done that, if we go ahead and add something new, let's suppose it's on that same day, hit enter there. You'll notice that that table fills up to a second day and we can add new numbers here. And let's say I put a category as for example, groceries here. Then all of a sudden we get that it's an expense there already. So if you want to add any new transactions, you simply need to put them towards the bottom there. Now, let me fast forward how I add a few more. Awesome. As you can see here, I've added a dozen more transactions just to make it a bit more realistic. Once we have that, we're ready to move on to the dashboard tab. But first, as we're here looking at all of this data, it's important to learn how to convert it into meaningful numbers. A great way to do that is using HubSpot's free introduction to data analytics report which you can download using the link in the description below as they're kindly sponsoring this video in this 50 page pdf you can find a comprehensive breakdown of what data analysis is what types of data analysis there are and some best practices as well this resource is great if you're a beginner or if you've already taken some statistic courses as well like myself I personally find it most useful to brush up on some important terms and make sure I do all of the best practices when it comes to analyzing data. So if you want to check this out, head over to the link in the description below to download this completely free report from HubSpot to level up your data analysis skills. All right, back to the video. All right, now that we're done with the entries, let's move up to the dashboard tab. And over here, you can see that we want to get the year to date monthly breakdown. 
And for this, we're going to break it down into our income, expenses, and savings. So let's go ahead and fill those in. So income, expense, and saving. For each of these, we wanna break it down by month. So January over here would be the first, and so forth, February. So let me fast forward how I do these. Great, so we have the full list of months, and now we need to find the income for January. And to do, the, to do that, we're gonna need the entries tab, but we're gonna need a formula. So let's use the sum ifs, which is going to sum only if it's in the month of January, and only if it's income, not if it's an expense. So the sum range is going to be all of the amounts. So we'll select that with control shift down. And you notice here that instead of having a cell number, like maybe D58, we have the amount. That's what it says. The reason for that is because this is a table. Using a table format, when we insert new transactions, they're going to be detected in the amounts as well, making it more dynamic comma there and the criteria range is all of the separate months. So let's select all of these with control shift down, should be the whole month area, comma, and the criteria number one is that it needs to be equal to the month of January, which we can select right above here. You can't quite see it there, but you get the idea, comma. And the criteria range number two is that it needs to be an income based on this column over here. So let's select them with control shift down, comma, and the criteria number two, if we go back to the dashboard, is that it needs to be an income. So make sure you select that income. In this case, we need to lock it to make it dynamic. So basically, if we drag this formula down right now, that income row is going to start uh, moving around, which we don't want. We only want to move it from here to an expense or a saving. So for that, we can just hit on the F4 key there, you'll notice that it adds some dollar signs. We wanna put those dollar signs only under that 10 and hit enter. I did that by pressing the F4 key a second time. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. Great, once we have that, we can drag it down by double clicking there on the edge and we can select this whole area right over here, control C and paste it over to our expenses as well and finally paste it to our savings. This is going to require a different formula, which is simply the income minus the expenses. And that's pretty much it there. So we can double click there again to update it. To make sure the sum ifs is working properly, we can always select any random cell. And you'll notice that it's now linking to expenses as opposed to income, and it's in the month of February. So that's all looking good there. Hit escape to get out of that. Now we can format this whole area. So this first part I could select and maybe choose a green color as income is positive. I could also change it to say a white font and this one in red and so forth. So let me fast forward how I do these. So I've done these titles, but now we can also find the total down below over here. And for this, we can just select Alt equals. That's gonna get the sum of all of these totals. That looks good. And we also want the average just to see what our monthly average income is. We can use the equals average formula for that. Hit the tab key there and we want to select all of the months. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. You might notice though that average is very very low. Looking at our numbers, we don't really have anything below 3000 there. The reason is because we have all of these zeros, it's also counting them. So instead of a normal average formula, we might want to use an if at the end there. So it's the average if formula. And this is the range, we're happy with that. We'll put a comma there. And as our criteria in quotations, let's say that it's greater than zero. This way it filters out any zero values. Now you can see it's looking a lot better. Once we have this, we can control C to copy and just paste it across these other ranges. You'll notice that they move dynamically to this last part. So it's all looking good. Let me continue fast forwarding some of the formatting. Awesome, you can see what this is looking like now. I basically added some borders as you can see up over here and added some lighter fill colors down below. Once we have this, an optional plus could be to select this area with the month values and go to conditional formatting. 
under data bars, we might want to select, say, a green bar, just to see more or less what the numbers look like. Could do the same with the expenses in red, just gonna do that quickly here, just for you to see, and the savings in yellow. So again, data bars and select the yellow, that's fully optional. Great, now we have this monthly breakdown, but it doesn't tell us much about specific categories. We can do that down below though, with the year-to-date category breakdown. Over here, we're gonna have both the income categories as well as the expense categories. And based on these, we're gonna wanna select the types. So we'll go equals, and under the entries, we can select all of the types based on the table over here. So we have three categories for the income. We'll select those three. And for the expenses, we'll do the same thing. We have these over here and hit enter. Awesome. With that, we can use the same sum ifs formula that we used earlier. So the sum range is going to be all of the different amounts as well. So control shift down, comma. The criteria range number one is no longer that it's a month, right? Instead, it's by the category. So let's select all of the categories there with control shift down, comma. And the criteria number one is that now it needs to be a salary. We don't have to filter by income because the salary already implies that. We'll close a parenthesis and hit enter. You can see the amount there and we can drag that down already. And now we can copy this and paste it down over here. And again, we'll just drag it down by double clicking. We might wanna find the totals down below like we did earlier, just by going to Alt equals and hitting enter. Let me fast forward how I do this one and reformat as well. Awesome, we now have this breakdown by category as well. We could add conditional formatting just like we did before. One thing to note though is the file is getting kind of long, so it would be nice to group these areas. We can do that by selecting the rows kind of like that and going over to data and clicking on group there. You'll notice we get this bar on the side, which I'll show you what it does after. Same thing with this part over here. We can just select that area up to row 25, say, and click on group. Now we can press that minus sign and it's going to collapse that whole area and the plus sign is going to expand it. We can do both at once by pressing that one or expand both at once by pressing that two. Finally, you might have noticed there's an empty area up top over here. This is to add a few of the key summary values. So let me first put the text and then we'll work on all the areas. So you can see here, I've added a few text values that I think are useful. First up, we have the current date. Now you don't wanna type it manually and instead to make it dynamic, we can use the today formula, which returns the date today. So basically whenever you open the file, then the percentage of month is basically, hey, how much of the month has already passed? That way we can gauge more or less how we're doing in that month. We can do that by going to equals. And first we're gonna go ahead and select day formula, hit the tab key, and we wanna select the current date. Close a parenthesis. That's basically gonna give us that, hey, it's the 11th. From there, we wanna divide that by, by, by the end of month EOM formula. This gives us the last day in a month. Hit the tab key there, but we need to tell it what month we want. For that, we just put the month formula inside of it and we wanna select the current date. So it detects that it's a month of December there. We can close a parenthesis, add a comma, and we want it to be the current month. So we're gonna put a zero there, close a parenthesis and hit enter. Now you can see that we've completed 35% of the current month. So if we do like 11 equals 11 divided by 31, you'll see we get that same number. The idea here is that now it's dynamic. For the year to date income, we would just link the total that we have to date. Same thing goes with the expense and then the savings over here. That's the idea. Let me fast forward how I format these. Awesome. Now that we have the finished product, let's go ahead and try if it actually works. So we can head over to the entries tab down towards the bottom. Let's suppose we have a new entry on the 1st of August, for example, just to see what that works. If that works, we'll put the date there. It's August. 
Let's put a huge amount there just for us to see if everything works okay. And let's say that this is something under groceries. Hit the tab key so it's an expense and we don't need a description. It's fine as is. Now, when we take a look at the dashboard, you can see that we have a massive amount in expense there in August and very bad savings as well. If we scroll lower down, you'll notice that groceries is looking particularly bad there. So it means that it's all working correctly. If you want to learn more about finance in Excel, the next step is to build a financial model, which you can learn how to do over here or by taking our complete finance evaluation course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.